What's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon. It's the Earth Master here back on this Monday, March 27th, 2023. It's about 1.09 p.m. here along the West Coast uh, in the state of California. A little bit of activity ramping up here uh, in California, also down south here along the Middle America Trench. Uh, global uptick uh, appears to be taking place here today. Latest quake shows a 1.9 earthquake on the globe here. Let's go ahead and check out the latest activity here across the USGS map as we zoom in to the state of California out here, the West Coast. Seen a little bit of a broader movement kicking up here over the last 24 hours just off the San Andreas Fault here on the North American side of the plate boundary. Had a couple smaller earthquakes uh, coming in this morning. It looks like a 2.5 and a 1.1. Also some activity across the San Jacinto Fault Zone. And we got one earthquake even right smack dab. Outside of Mojave, near Tehachapi, on the Garlock Fault Shear Zone at 1.2. Very shallow earthquake uh, into that area. Also a little bit of broader movement here up through the um, Calaveras Fault Zone, stretching up towards the Concord area where we did see a 2.3 come in yesterday. Some smaller quakes here uh, right around that plate boundary and the fault systems as they kind of run into uh, one another here. A little bit of activity kicking up here again into the Nevada-California border. You guys remember this, the Fish Lake Valley Fault Zone? This thing was kicking up here a week or so ago. Looks like uh, pressure activity continuing to ramp up here along the West Coast with a return of uh, earthquake activity here in this region. So we'll continue to watch the West Coast uh, with a little bit of heightened activity out here. Uh, clear like volcanic fields, still seeing some movement. There in the region of the Calpine hydrothermal operations. Uh, also off the coast of Northern California, just shy of the Cascadia mega thrust area, the subduction zone. We had a, a 2.3, pretty shallow, 4.5 kilometers deep here. Again, just shy of the Cascadia subduction zone out here along the Gorda ridges. Uh, and of course we had this one here from yesterday, a 4.0 into the Blanco fracture zone. Uh, not a whole lot popping up here through the Pacific Northwest today. Uh, movement uh, across the rest of the country. A little scattered activity across the uh, extreme southwestern edge here of Utah. Up into Yellowstone. Let's see what we have going on up here at Yellowstone National Park. Um, looks like a few smaller quakes here on the map around the uh, northwest corner of the park once again. Uh, aside from that, uh, looks like, I don't know, I'd say there's definitely a good handful here today. Probably about 10 or 15, maybe 20 quakes listed up here on the map. Uh, USGS is reporting um, two. <laughs> reporting two of them, at least one from today. So a 0.5, apparently uh, they may get to them. Again, they're just coming back from the weekend. Mondays are a little slow, but they should get all of these quakes that are taking place here. Uh, they're at Yellowstone eventually. It takes them a little while to pinpoint some of those smaller quakes, but uh, aside from that, there's not a whole lot of earthquake activity ramping up here across the uh, area of Yellowstone. Just those small microquakes. Um, Texas, Oklahoma area. We did have one earthquake here this morning into the Oklahoma area, 2.3. Not uh, a whole lot of activity, though, going on across the rest of the country. Uh, outside of the Winsboro, South Carolina region, uh, north of Columbia, had a 1.4. Uh, the Caribbean plate has been very active lately, um, showing a few earthquakes here across the map on the last 24 hour scale. Uh, looking at the globe here, I'm going to bring this down slightly. It looks as though, I don't know how it does it, but sometimes the uh, adjustment up here wants to. Uh, show more than 24 hours here so there we go there's the last 24 hours of uh, earthquake activity two point uh, i think i have it set at 2.0 and above um maybe a little bit below that but either way uh, earthquake activity around the caribbean plate here today uh still somewhat active as mentioned we do have a newer 3.1 over around the uh kind of looks like around the dominican republic showing up here but far as the USGS earthquake activity shows, uh, mostly some movement here from yesterday. A couple smaller quakes um, 
uh, from today as well, though, into the middle America Trench. A couple fours uh, kicking off there in that area and down south into the South America region here. 5.0 out along the plate boundary. Let's see USGS reporting it. Yes, they are. Out here around the uh, Chile Rise, West Chile Rise, 4.7, about 9 o'clock this morning. Coming in here at 10 kilometers deep. Uh, a couple different fracture zones and divergent boundaries out here. Should amplify some conditions out here along the South America area as far as uh, uptick goes. We'll continue to watch that. Um, seeing a little bit of newer quake activity already up north into the Peru Chile Trench here with that white ring, uh, 2.5. All right, uh, the Alaska area as we look up north here, uh, getting some movement here around the uh, Tanaga and the Takawanga volcano. Got one earthquake back building here prior to the subduction zone of 4.5. That one coming in late last night. Uh, a little bit of activity further uh, down dip here into the subduction zone. Seen a 4.2 yesterday uh, at 204 kilometers deep. So a little bit of adjustment taking place here across the subduction zone areas uh, of the Pacific Plate. Not a whole lot going on across the Japan area or the Kuril Kamchaka Trench. Uh, and that uh, is verified here across this model as well. Getting a pretty good cluster of movement once again around the Indonesia and the Philippines once again. Quite a few threes and fours rocking uh, this area in a pretty good swarm fashion here. But mostly cluttered to this specific region. Not a whole lot of advancement here across the Java Trench. But we'll watch that as this uh, activity uh, looks like it's kind of building up here specifically around this area. Uh, there's that lack of seismic activity up here around the Java Trench. We'll watch that for some movement uh, today. Uh, let's see, down here in Africa, rather odd, 4.9. Let's see, is that being reported down there? Yes, it is. Let's see here. Looks like it is close to the uh, Democratic Republic of the Congo area. Lake Edward region, a 4.9, 16 kilometers deep into that uh, rift zone out here. All right, uh, what else? We got Eastern Afghanistan, Turkey area. A couple quakes here from yesterday. There's one from today. It looks like a 4.4 into the Turkey region. Aftershock activity continuing there across the area. Nothing going on in the Atlantic Ocean, north or south. Um, so a couple areas definitely to watch today. What do we got here? 4.1 coming in. Um... Is that recent? Yes, it is. Middle America Trench area. Back over here around the Fiji area and Tonga Trench. Let's go ahead and zoom on down here and see what's going on. Across the area, most of these, actually all of these from yesterday, uh, including that one down there in New Zealand. Not a whole lot showing up here on the globe as uh, far as new activity goes, but uh, I will verify that real quick with the GeoNet servers and uh, make sure we got all the Earthquakes being reported. A couple smaller quakes, though. Uh, not uncommon there on the major plate boundary. Give a quick glance here at the drums. This will give me a good indicator of what's going on. And there's that four pointer from last night. Aside from that, only a handful of smaller quakes uh, near the Birch Farm area, it looks like, North Island. Uh, but overall, seismic activity fairly mellow there across both North and South Island, New Zealand region. All right, uh, let's see what else we got here for space weather. Um, got a huge exam I got to do today, so I'm going to get that done right after this update. Uh, it's going to take me a couple hours to get done here for school. And so I'll be busy here on the side. Okay, what do we got here? Looks as though they added 3256 as a beta gamma, a somewhat complex structure there of a sunspot. Um, does harbor a 25% chance for a C flare, 5% uh, chance for an M flare. Now that is on the um, 3256. It's going to be up over here, southwestern uh, quadrant here of the sun. It is around the area I was kind of watching last night. This whole area right here looking a little bit more complex. Um, I guess with this included as well, but this is the specific region that they're saying uh, harbors a beta gamma class. Uh, but notice the structure here of all the different colors kind of intertwining there together, uh, which could indicate some uh, unstable conditions. 
Uh, but that's about it. Um, around the bend here, around the eastern limb of the sun, maybe a new little sunspot trying to develop, it looks like. Um, not noted yet on the um, imagery here. But we'll continue to watch that as that uh, progresses around the bend, so to speak, around the Earth side, Earth facing side of the sun. Uh, overall threat looks like 85% chance for a C flare, 10% for an M flare and uh, probably less than 1% for the X and the proton events there. No major uh, coronal holes facing us. We do have number 88 currently very close into position of the Earth-Sun plane, uh, directly lined up with us, it looks like, uh, center disk. So we'll watch out here uh, a little bit later this week, see if we get any, um, any amplification here from the uh, three-day may provide a little bit of storming up at the higher latitudes but for now things fairly mellow across the board folks not a whole lot of uh not a whole lot of potential there all right uh goodness storm prediction center looks like uh day five day four and day five look at this day four uh is going to be on thursday out in the uh, Plains, Southern Plains, Oklahoma, and Northern Texas got a 15% chance for some severe weather potential. Uh, that chance increases broadly with a 30% chance of severe weather on day 5, which is Friday. Proportions of Arkansas northward, way up north, but also this whole area down to about Northern Texas uh, extending up here. Uh, into portions of the Great Lakes area is uh, that's a wide area. A lot of people covered in that region. Uh, in fact, 40 million people uh, that day on Friday in the overall threat. But 30% chance this far out is uh, some serious business. Something we'll have to watch as we get closer to that day. Uh, and this could be in terms of tornado potential, large damaging hail, uh, also straight line winds as well. So we'll watch this as it comes uh, into the uh, forecast right now though uh, today's outlook most of the severe weather potential down into the extreme south with a very slight chance of severe weather across um, the portions of the states down here uh, that includes looks like a uh, slight risk into savannah albany um, hilton head island hinesville it's a lot of georgia covered down there uh, also that uh, thunderstorm potential stretches all the way across here but far as the uh, severe weather outlook mainly within this zone here today um, looks like there's only a two percent chance of a tornado within that area wind 15 percent chance it looks to be uh, about a five percent chance for hail uh, within that uh, zone not expecting any major outbreak or anything like that today uh, or tomorrow tomorrow's going to be a little bit less on the active side here uh, for that weather potential but again remember day four day five that far out uh, looks like it could be a pretty bad setup here for some severe weather but we'll check those out as uh, it gets a little bit closer and a little bit more detail uh, because things can change right uh, weather models can uh, predict one thing but all it takes is just a little bump of uh, high pressure scooting off a uh, low pressure trough further north or further south and it, it just you know can mess up the forecast for us here along the west coast, notice California out here, we got more rain coming in tonight, tomorrow, and uh, into the day and Wednesday as well. So a um, lot of snow. We're talking about feet of snow up here into the Sierra Nevada once again uh, for California. Look at those heavy blue, dark blue, uh, indicating feet of snow, probably up around six, six feet or more up there at the higher elevations of the Sierra Nevada. Uh, for us here in the west coast in the in the sacramento valley we're expecting some rainfall uh, and then after that for the west coast we just barely get a clipper of a storm system here this next system coming in on uh, the uh, towards the next weekend time frame looks to be heading mainly into the pacific northwest uh, looks like we'll get a little shot of colder air and some precipitation chances uh, following that before somewhat of a warmer system comes in later that uh, week into Wednesday and Thursday of next week. But either way, if you look at the weather models here, um, no sign of any dominant ridging out here 
uh, which would spell a, a sign of spring for the west coast and it's just not uh not looking likely out here so get used to the colder temperatures the rainfall and the snow uh, that looks like that could extend well into the middle of april all right folks i'm going to get started on what i need to do out here today and we'll catch you guys back here a little bit later on tonight uh with a quick up with a uh, complete update unless something major happens out here uh, till then stay safe and have a good monday peace out